Hi everybody. I hope you're doing marvelously well. We're going to have some fun today. Yes, I am going to mix some death metal. Yes, death metal. You heard it right. Warren, he of the rock pop, I don't know what other kind of world, Rootsy, I've done Americana, I've done pop music, I've done rock, I've done some classic rock, of course, Aerosmith and Ace Frehley and people like that. Yeah, I've covered most of the bases, but I don't know if I've ever done death metal. I've done like modern metal, kind of pop metal. I did Black Veil Bride, so, but this is much heavier. And it is the Rate My Mix competition for the month. So there is multi-tracks down below. Well, in fact, actually, let's get this square. There is a link down below to go and download them because you can enter the Rate My Mix competition, which has tons of incredible prizes, has speakers and interfaces and schnizzle tons of plugins and all kinds of fun stuff. And of course, we're doing it with our very good friend, Mr. Christian Kola. The man, the myth, the legend. The heaviest of the heavy, Mr. Christian Kola, of course, owns the Kohler Audio Cult. We do that together. He's an amazing guy. He's one of the few people working in the metal genre that still records live drums, live instruments, as well as using programming where necessary. What I love about him, he's got one foot in the present and the past and knows, and the future, I should say. Present, future, past, three feet, who knows? Anyway, I'll stop waffling on. This is exciting. This is Malamore, and the track is called Dead to the World. Now, I'm mixing in a hybrid fashion, which means I'm gonna be doing some EQ and compression on the session, and then I'm gonna go through the console over here. So it's a bit of both. So what I thought we would do, because I'm gonna do this, is strap on this. So it's a GoPro. So I'm gonna wear the GoPro on my head like this. So when I'm using the console, it works. So we see what happens, do I look ridiculous? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, he says. Let's listen to the track. So first of all, I'm gonna to go to 3536 on the console where we have this coming out, and I'm gonna play the mix. So this is the mix that the band did at Sabella Studios, and I have to do a quick shout out. Sabella Studios had a fire about a month ago. So there will be a link underneath here where if you want to, you can go and donate money to their GoFundMe. So, Hats off to Sabella Studios um, for making great records for many, many decades. And if you can spare some cashola to help them out, please do. There's a link down below. And record was made with the staff engineer and staff producer, which is uh, Mr. Sabella himself. We zeroed out the console completely. So this console is totally zeroed out. So you're going to see me do every single move. <laughs> This is too much metal for one hand, apparently. It is bright. Wow, it is bright. We, at the moment, we're using the, the Jones Scanlon speakers. We're about to put up the Genel X back up again. People have been asking. The people have spoken. They want me to use the Genel X again, and we are going to put them up. But God, this is bright. These, these speakers have a huge, massive tweeter, and woo! I can guarantee you one thing, I am not mixing it that bright. It's a good reference though, so it would give me an idea of what they were going for. If you can, you can have a rough mix or any kind of mix, it's always good to have it. Let's just take a loop of the drums. I don't know where to go. It looks pretty intense wherever we go. Now, a couple of things. We don't have a tempo map for this at all. I don't believe it was cut to a click. I think this was a band who rehearsed their butt off in the studio and then they just recorded it. So it's double kicks. There's two independent kicks going on. Oh, so this is the this is the trigger kick from which is totally out of phase. Is it out of phase completely on both ones? It is. Okay, so that apparently is the Elisis one. I wonder if they knew it was out of phase. Well, first thing I'm gonna do before we even listen to it is just flip the polarity on it, reverse it. So we'll just go, we take the trim pot here and just go here and hit. Okay. All right, let's have a listen to that kick drum. So I'm going to put it up on channel one. It's been output on channel one. All right, so here we are, ladies and gentlemen. There's the kick. That's flat. I'm going to crank it. 
nuke the uh, Alesis. So this is back in the days when they would have two kick drums. Now, of course, we have two kick pedals on one drum, which kind of makes a bit more sense. So this is two, and it sounds like they're slightly different tuned. Okay, and then this one. That was an understatement, slightly different. They're completely different. So this one's got a ton more low end than the other one. So before we do anything else, let's just grab, before I even do any EQ on the console, because I'm summing all of these together, let's grab um, some EQ on the second one, see if we can boost that low end up. So it's going to grab a good old fashioned REQ. Let's go back to the other one. Oh, interesting. So it's. The question is, if I throw in the Elisis, so what I'm tempted to do is get a transient designer on that. So it feels like... So even with the attack up, it's not matching. So it's an EQ thing. Now there's too much bleed. There's more depth to it, so what I'm going to do um, to the one that sounds better, frankly, the top one sounds better. So I'm going to go in and pull out some more low mids. There you go. Much closer. So I pulled out a ton of 350. It's still a little kind of mid-rangey. It's not identical, it's a shame that it's bringing out so much bleed, but it's kind of close enough that I'm happy with it. And the reason why I say that is because I don't want it to be exactly the same, I just want it to have the same kind of effect, which is a dip in low mids, a boost at like 60, and then, you know, a bit of an attack on it. So if I throw in the uh, Alesis, and also if they're slightly different, it does create that illusion, or that feeling, I shouldn't say illusion, of left and right kicks, you know, da 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 If they're identical, it'd just be like a freaking machine gun. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a subgroup. 
So I'm going to send all three of these to one bus. Don't forget, there is a mixing competition. You can download these multi tracks and mix it. All right, so I'm now sending these to one bus. And so if I do any global EQ, Stay down just a little bit. All right, now I'm going to the console. So first thing I'm gonna do is send to a VCA group one. So this is VCA group one, and now I've already got this label because it's my standard, now I'm going to group one here. So this is where my drums are coming out. So VCA group one. Now let's engage some EQ. I can engage the low passing here. And split them and we can go maybe about 6K, 7K, 8. So there's nothing above that. We don't need any super, super high highs. Now, typically what I do is I do like 2.5 on rock. So 2.5 for the clickiness would be here. But metal tends to go a little bit more like 7K-ish. So we'll leave that off for a moment. Let's go here. That's pretty metal. If you listen to that rough, you remember how aggressive it was? So I'm about 7K a boost there. I'm not gonna touch anything else there. I'm gonna go to about 350 here and cut. Now let's go to about 60. Oh yeah, you can feel that. That's pretty rocking. So if we go and see our levels here on the meters. Now, what I like to do is do channel out, which means EQ into compression. At the moment, there's no compression. I think we can actually, we could decide. There we go. I think we can give a bit more level going in. It's not too bad if you look here on the screen, but I have no problem with exaggerating the EQ points because this is a metal track, so quite often I'll just do more of the same. So if I select 60 here and boost that, quite wide, let's narrow it. Now let's pull some more 350 out. There you go. Now we're getting metal. Turn it up a little bit. I actually want to hit the console a little harder, just a little bit harder. I just kind of want to hear that. There you go. Look, it's bouncing around about zero. Now I'm excited. Now, I've also got, now it's overloading a little bit. So let's bring it down just a little bit. You see the overload light? Bring that down to DB. Occasional. It might have to come down a little bit more, but it's occasionally doing it. I've got the release set to fast. I've got the ratio about three to one. And, and once again, I've got the EQ, like the boost going into compression. That's the channel out setting there. I've got the expander. I'm not going to use the expander. I don't need a gating or expanding. Look at how fast that's going. Can you imagine the expander trying to keep up with that? That would be insane. Down just a little bit. Now, I've got some inserts if I want them. So I'm gonna hit this insert here. Now that's, that's overloading because you're hitting it quite hard, but you see what I've got? I've got inserted here an API EQ. So I've got cut at about 250, about 125, which I like to cut because that's where the bass guitar is gonna live quite a lot. 500's left. That's basically it, I can go. Yeah. A little bit of 4K. Out, in. I'm actually going to 
take a little bit of 31 there. Now, let's just, again, pull this down a little bit. Not hit the console quite so hard because all this boosting EQ. It's still occasionally overloading. Don't know if it bothers me, to be honest. Still hitting around zero on the console over here. a little bit less. I don't know if I need 3 to 6 dB gain reduction. So I'm just using the plug in here to do it. That sounds nice to me. Alright, now I've got one last secret weapon and that's bus 4 here. Now I'm looking over here behind the camera. See this? It's a 128. It's a DBX subharmonic synthesizer. So now I'm going to center that. See it coming up here? Overload, so let's keep it about there. Okay. Now, let's go over to here. Oh yeah, I'm going to send this to also to one. So here's with the sub in. Far too much. Bring it down. Cut. Just adding that really huge low end. I mean, if I stand back here, it's massive. I'm intrigued about something. Always, always, always check something. Nope, phase is good. Okay, so that's our kick drum. I've got lots of really aggressive EQing going on. Boosting of lows here at 60 hertz, cutting the low mids, boosting the top. I've done the same thing here, not as dramatically, but the same thing here on the API, and I've also done it in Pro Tools. That's really, really exaggerating it. It's nowhere near as bright as they had it on theirs, but it's aggressive. Now let's, uh, let's look at the snare. It looks like the snare We've got a snare coming out of two, so let's go over here. Snare obviously is going to go to also group one. Very polite snare. So I'm going to find a section where the snare is playing a little busier, so we can really get have some fun and EQ it. There's a good ring on it. Okay. There's a good ring on it. Let's just find the body on the bottom. Now, I do cheat. I do have an API EQ here. So if I put this in, to that, 125 boost and 250. Hitting it a little bit hard. Let's do the channel out. Bring the ratio up. And that SSL spankiness, so it's EQ in there. Let's get some 7K and go crazy. Now, I don't mind the occasional overload. I don't care about that. I really don't, but I am going to bring it down slightly. What I'm going to do is create another um, subgroup here. Oh, see, I'm going to do a bit more EQ. I kind of, I kind of like the way it's recorded. It's, it, look, I think the compression on the console might be enough for it, but.
So what I've done is I've gone absolutely nuts on it. I've got like 138, I'm boosting the schnizzle out of it and 7K. The reality is like all my friends that work in this genre, they have, they're not afraid to go crazy on EQ and stuff. They're really making it aggressive. And if you compare it to the mix we heard, which is so unbelievably bright, I don't think we're getting anywhere near that. It's well recorded. I mean, it's a Neve console. And these players know what they're doing. Okay, I'm just, I'm actually gonna not go to the toms next. There's a hat mic over here. The way I usually do it is I usually dump my overheads and my hi-hats and everything into the same group. And another thing I'm just gonna say, philosophically, the reason why I'm spending the time on the drums is because I listened to the rough and I felt like the drums weren't my kind of drums. I want them to be big and fat and stuff like that. I'm also philosophically thinking that as the guitars are gonna be a lot closer to what they're supposed to be, that I shouldn't have to get in there and do too much to the guitars because metal bands, obsess about guitar tones. And I want to keep the integrity of the song. I want the drums to be more of what they are, enhance what they are, but I, I feel like I, my gut is the least I'm gonna do is to the guitars. I could be completely wrong, but I'm not spending much time on those yet. I wanna get these drums slamming. So, okay, let's listen to the hats and the overheads. They're coming up on five and six. So if I go with five and six over here, and then I, everything I'm doing is see on the console, I'm just setting at zero dB at the moment and then sending to one. I pan audience perspective. You can do drummer's perspective. I totally understand if you want to do that, but I'm going to pan that audience perspective. Let's listen to the overheads. Obviously, Pan these. I feel like that's panning ever so slightly right, so I think we're good. The weird thing is, not the weird thing is, the good thing is I feel like they recorded it with EQ on, a bit of high passing. So we can get in here and do a little bit of kind of generic EQ, like we can do a bit of high passing just to get it out of the way of any rumble or anything. Maybe we're not hearing the rumble. These speakers have a lot of low end, so it shouldn't be an issue. But yeah, I'm getting to like 80, 90, or about 90. I don't know if I want to brighten it anymore. We can save that for later, if necessary. Typically with toms and stuff like that, leading into overheads, I'll cut a bit of 350. So let's go, I've done that already. So let's now go, let's go over to the tom section over here, find something pretty crazy where they're in the overheads and see how that sounds. Take the EQ out. Toms are really well, really well tuned. For as much as that first kick drum was a little wonky, one of the, the second one, these overheads are recorded really, really well. I don't feel like I need to brighten them. I feel like the toms sound fantastic in them. That's pretty nice. I mean, for if we just go kick, snare, overhead. So I'm, first of all, I'm gonna group all my kick drums together, by the way, so here's all the kicks. I'm trying not to use any samples. I'm gonna keep the integrity of the mix. Now this is kick, snare, overheads and hi-hat. I don't think I'm a genius, I think these are well recorded. And this is starting to sound really, really good. Now, obviously, the genre, especially that particular period of time, was really, really super hyped and aggressive and offensive sounding. That's not how I mix. But maybe, you know, think about that from a perspective of like what the artist would want. But for me, I'm going to stick to it like this. I'm trying to find a section where all the toms play together. We're going to listen and see if we can discover which toms which. 
So let's bring up the toms to zero. Let's send them to bus one. So remember this subgroup over here. So it was sent to here. Interestingly enough, these don't sound as good as they do in the overheads. Okay, cool. This is the overheads. So I'm going to take this little faint hit. So this is my, I'm going to make this about 20 or 30% that way. Rack, which is barely playing. I'm going to assume this is slightly at the other side of the snare, so 20. And then the floor, I'm going to put about 60. Panning them. It's pretty good. It's a little. It's interesting, the overheads kind of sound better. I think they EQ those overheads going in. Even that slight EQ idea pulling out the low mids is not as dramatic as what's happening. Uh, with these toms. Um, so I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to do some individual kind of EQ pulling out. So typically I'm just going to grab, again, a generic EQ for which me is always the uh, Renaissance EQs that always do the job. I'm just going to do this. And I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to universally, I'm just going to pull it down on every single one. So. Might do something identical on each one, but yeah, about 80. Oh, to that the EQ. So much less boxy. That's on two to three Ks giving it a little bit of attack. The overheads back in. I'm really just tempted to just copy that over to the second Tom. It's the same EQ now. Oh yeah. See how much that boost does, and then that 350 cut, and then a little bite. Just copy it over to the rack. Now the rack's difficult because. I'm not sure if he really meant to play that properly, so let's go a section in here. Wrong one. Right EQ. Cool. Now you could use uh, a transient designer on that, and I might still do that just to control that sustain and stuff. But you know, what I'm going to do now is just send these to uh, a stereo auxiliary. Very tempted to do this and just copy down the EQ. Relax it a little bit.
So let's take a section here with the kick and snare and the toms. thing I'm not digging is when I hear that kick doing those single two hits, it doesn't sound as good to me as when it's super fast. Let's have a listen. Lead. So I'm not digging that. So what's happening is we're compressing the snare somewhat and the kick bleed that's going into it is, is too loud. There. And that's what I was hearing that was affecting the way we heard the kick drum. Let's do a couple of things and see if that's a phase issue. Uh, it sort of is, sort of isn't. I mean, it's the phase is really random. So this is what I'm going to do. I don't know if I want to gate it yet. It's possible that even in the fast sections here, the gate with the SSL might handle it. Let's have a look. Let's have a listen. Whenever I hear it, I don't like it that much. So let me see what it sounds like in that section. So here we've got kicks bleeding into the snare. And the reason why I can't just, what I would normally do in like a, a classic rock track where it's like kick, kick, snare, a kick, kick, snare, it'd be easy. I would take the kick drum and sidechain a compressor or a gate to the snare. Can't do it in this instance because there's so many times the kick and snare play together. the fastest release. So I'm going to check now with a snare in and out, see how much it affects the kick drum. So with a snare in, snare out. Not digging it. I'm not digging it. The, the, the compression that's on the snare 
Let's set, make sure it's not hitting the console too hard. I've gone up to 120 on this. I'm trying to get rid of this kick. So we're still on the snare. By the way, the cricket's going. This will tell you what it is. Bangladesh, India. Have to have it in the background. We're still trying to figure out what to do with this kick bleed. I don't really like what it's doing. See, I like the compressor hitting the snare. I think it makes it really exciting, but I don't like the fact that because compressing it 3 to 6 dB, what's happening is the, the, the kick of bleed is coming through. So let's see before we get to the console whether we can get it here. Now with this console, I've got this computer partition, so we're running an old version of Pro Tools, old run of the DAW in there, so we haven't got some of the new fancy plugins. When we're mixing in a box, we have everything, every modern fancy plugin. Here you go, Expander Gate, Dyne 3. This is the comes free with Pro Tools. It's the stock plugin. Bring the range up. Bring the release this a bit longer. Not bad. Maybe a little bit. Not bad. Let's put in all the drums. Now it's hitting the console just a little bit too hard and it's getting that squishy thing. There's a sweet point when I hit the console hard that I like. And then when the red light's on too hard, I find that at least on my console it ends up sounding like squish squish. I'm gonna bring it down. I'm actually bring it down in the plug-in. I can bring it down here in the as well. Still hitting hard. So on the snare here. We're going to, I'm going to bring it down because I don't like the red light slammed on. When it's occasionally on, it's nice. But when it stays on forever, it gets really horrific. It gets all squishy. So, still on a little bit too much for me. You'll notice I'm dimming it when I'm not sitting in front of it. I don't want to blast this and just blast my left ear or everything's going to sound quiet on my left hand side. Okay, so we have to reset our threshold on our compressor. Take the dim off and have a listen. Remarkably good, the, you know, the stock. Yeah.
and listen to the room. So this is seven and eight on the room. We're getting close already. Set this obviously to the drum bus as well, so it's coming out here. Everything's at zero so far. We can pull out some of that ugly 350, so just to engage the EQ, come into some of these low mids. We have to decide, do we want the low end on the kick, on the room mics? It might just make it all floppy, let's have a listen. how I feel. I feel like I don't want the double low end. I feel like the low end that's coming on the room mics is messing up the low end of the, of the kicks. I want the kicks to be more forward and more modern sounding. That's just me. So I'm going to wipe off some of that. In fact, let's get actually get a, a four band EQ. Pretty aggressive in the cymbals. These room mics were probably quite high up, they're not on the ground. I like to mic the grounds quite often. I highlighted where the overheads were so I knew where it was on these room mics. Now, believe it or not, when I don't have access to fancy multi bands and stuff like that, what I usually do is get, grab a de So I'm just going to grab a stock kind of de Another trick I learned was actually to do this, was to get lo-fi, so I'm turning the de off for a second, and I'm gonna go and grab the lo-fi plugin. Now, lo-fi is a saturation and distortion, it's kind of both, and have a listen. Another thing I like to do is take a room like that, which is okay, but not great, and turn it into a room mic. So again, I'm going to turn it into, put reverb on it. So now it's a room mic that I'm making larger. So I'm gonna go to room one, medium, 750 milliseconds. Kind of digging that, get a compressor on it, just for level. Throw all this back into the drums.
Now, I think the snare itself could do with like a really aggressive reverb. We can get to that in a second. That would really, really help it. It's funny, I was watching a tutorial with somebody the other day who will remain nameless, and they were talking about a snare sound, and the snare sound was literally the reverb that was creating most of it. And that happens quite a lot. You can just get a snare and just put the right reverb on. Everybody's like, wow, what a massive snare. Tommy Q. Let's pull out some more low mids. With a bit of bite. That's going to about 3K. Go into this tom here. This is where automating these toms might come in handy. Let's get this range here. Hear that in context of the whole drum. Pretty much digging it now, it's pretty aggressive. Let's get that snare and find a reverb for it. So I have plenty of places on the console where I can just put out a snare reverb without it going back through EQ. So let's just find a send. Five and six here. Now, what I can do is I can put this out of 35, 36, which is where we were listening to, believe it or not, we were listening to the rough mix. And they're just a pair of stereo faders that we just leave with no EQ or compression on. So we'll call it reverb, snare, We can find something nice and generic. I mean, we can use something similar from before. I can have that output also through the drum. Just one second. We could use a trans design, designer on it and make it more about the actual attack. Not a lot of people do, but it's great.
<laughs> Not a great deal of stereo imagery with those rooms, is it? It's, it's very mono. All right, let's go to the bass. What do we have? We have a DI and a bass amp. So here is just those two elements. The bass, I've got them bass. Sub here, I put it up to zero. I've got here on zero. Um, we're going to make that obviously bus two because that subgroup two, I should say. So that's being assigned to two from here from the console. Let's have a listen. That is evil with a capital E, vil. How is the phase? Not actually that bad. It looks like the DI needs to be delayed by a few milliseconds. I would say, we go to samples, 32. So let's delay that DI by 32. So we'll go to time adjuster here, short, and make it 32. And it should get a bit more low end now. That is messy, but in a pretty evil way. And once again, capital E. So I've listened to the DI on its own. Amp on its own. So the amp's definitely got a little bit more low lows, but also got a lot of high. So for schnitz and schniggles, I'm going to go around and search. So I'm going to search. See how much low end I can get out of this DI. So now I'm on the amp and I'm gonna see if I can just get rid of. It's evil! We're a capital EV. So I'm gonna group those two together. So grab an EQ. Get out of the way of the kick. I'm dimming it so there's not so much bleed and also so I'm not blowing out my left ear. So let's go at about a hundred. Boost that. Another R base. Take it out, dim. Drop in the drums. Yeah, baby. There's something about that top end on the amp that I just want to like annihilate slightly. So what I'm actually going to do is grab once again, lo-fi. So it's just taking that little squitchy, squitchy, squitchy kind of like high end and just distorting it ever so slightly.
because what I'm concerned about is you've got the kick going, tick, 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 you've got that, and it's like a lot of like high end confusion. So I'm just distorting the high end ever so slightly. I'm digging it. Okay, so now I have two, it looks like a pair of guitars. Wow, this is so straightforward. A pair of guitars. Okay, I'm going to go left and right, left, right. They're in 13, 14. Pan left and right. Okay, so 13, 14 in my rhythm section. And they are in um, group three. So let's grab, that's my electric. So let's just grab and send these to group three, like such. Boom, zero. Take them out. Yeah, GoPro is shaking all over the place, but I'm like going. Ging, 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 ging. <laughs> so all of you watching are probably like, what is going on? Funny, I was try trying to get them scoopy and thinking to myself, I'm gonna pull out some 2K. I tried pulling out 2K. There is no 2K to pull out. These are scooped. I mean, that's all the way out. That's all the way boosted. There's like nothing there. I mean, even all the way boosted is barely doing anything. That's incredible. So they're already scooped. So let's go up to like seven. There you go. So at about seven, we've got some stuff that we can exaggerate. So they're already scooped to high heaven. Let's see if we can find where the lowest. Let's go to 200 and see what we got. is nice to boost. So before, after. Touch of compression, doesn't really need any that heavy, but I'm touch.
fastest release time for this insane amount of kicks and stuff. This is crazy. So here's my vocal here on 24. Of the bard, I have brought you to your knees. Which is on Stop eight. Crying. There's no effect of me. Dead is what you will become. Now die to be of the bard. I have brought you to your knees. Stop your crying. There's no effect. I'm just gonna brighten it to make it cut. Is what you will become. Now die to be of the bard. I Again, not a lot to grab. Stop your crying. There's no effect on me. Dead is what you will become. Now die to be left apart. I have brought you to your knees. Stop your crying. There's no effect on me. Dead is what you will become. Now die to be left apart. I have brought you to your knees. Stop your crying. There's no effect on me. Dead is what you will become. Now die to be left apart. I have brought you to your knees. Stop your crying. There's no effect on me. Dead is what you will become. Now die to be left apart. I have brought you to your knees. Stop your crying. There's no effect on me. Dead is what you will become. Now die to be left apart. I have brought you to your knees. Stop your crying. There's no effect on me. Dead is what you will become. I've got to compare it. I've got to hear what it was, what we were listening to originally. <laughs> Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. That is bright. And it's all symbols. <laughs> And now this is what we got. I have brought you to your knees. Stop your crying. There's no effect on me. Dead is what you will become. Now die to be left apart. I have brought you to your knees. Stop your crying. Now die to be left apart. Brought you to your knees. Stop your crying, there's no effect on me, dead is what you will become. To be left apart, I have brought you to your knees. Stop your crying, there's no effect on me, dead is what you will become. Die. I'm bringing up that second vocal on a different fader. Stop your crying, there's no effect on me, Stop your crying! There's no effect on me! 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 Stop your crying! Yeah, baby! <laughs> this is insane! Absolutely insane! So I'm, I'm really intrigued. I might have to do some death metal listening to figure out what really genre-wise I should be doing. Should I be putting more effects on the vocals? Let's see what we've, how our vocals sound. Damn it, will you stop moving? Can't you just lie still or die? And if you don't hit your look, to see if you scared me, what are you? Not the day to be sure they're gonna lie. Kill the weeping. What you believe your lord? I feel like I'm happy with where that's at and all I'd want to do, maybe the mastering engineer could brighten it. I just don't know effects-wise what I should be doing on the vocal, you know? 
Now you can tell I, I pumped up the overheads more because their mix is like painful. I can't listen to it, the, the, which is probably part of the whole thing with death metal. But to me, it was too loud on the on the overheads. But I've done it louder than I normally would. Um, honestly, I'm going to take a break from this. I'm going to print a mix now, and I'm going to take a break for it. And we're going to come back with fresh airs on a new day and decide what we what we want to do. But it's pretty insane. It's a Pretty fun thing to do, and quite funny for you to watch me with the GoPro stuck to the top of my head. Fresh ears, new day. Been working on 55 other projects in the meantime. And uh, got my hat back on, so don't laugh. Just listened, and I'm pretty happy with it. There's some tweaks to do. There's no effects on the vocals. The guitars are really dry. The drums have a bit of room on, as you know. Bit of reverb on the snare. Didn't put anything on the kick, but I'm kind of happy. And I was thinking to myself, what do I like about this and what do I want to change? What I like about this kind of reminds me of kind of a Rick Rubin version of this genre, which is usually fairly dry, pretty natural sounding, and not a huge amount of mixing, not like tons and tons of detailed stuff, no fancy multiband compressors and dynamic EQs and stuff like that. I did uh, two, three records with Dave Sardi. We did a Hot Hot Heat record. We did a Thrills record. And I worked on the Towers of London record with him, a couple of other things as well. So when we were tracking, uh, we'd also be mixing in a separate room. And that was a Neve room. And I noticed, you know, when I would output stuff for him and everything, he did just EQ on a Neve. Like no fancy plugins, no, just like really straightforward, like get a really good drum sound up and then gentle EQ on the guitars. Now, listening back, I felt to myself that the guitars could be louder, could be just a bit more exciting. The drums sound fantastic, I'm really happy. The vocals maybe are a little bit hot, but once the guitars come up a bit and I bring the vocals down, then I think I just wanna make the vocals add some effect and maybe, maybe add a little bit more grit to the vocals, like a tiny bit of decapitator or something, just to edge them out just a little bit more, but not too much, because I, I just like how exciting it is. I was also concerned that I was gonna hate the low end on it and it was gonna be too much, but I don't. I don't. I like the low end on it. I like it sounding thick. It sounds like a Neve console recording. This may not be the way anybody else mixes, and it, it's certainly not modern rock, like metal, super clicky. It just sounds like a big, tough rock band that have rehearsed really, really well and gone into a world-class studio with a Neve console. So I'm gonna do some extra tweaks here. So let's press play. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to even up the bass a little bit. So so one of my favorite tricks is to use the M V2. So just make it a bit more even. So what I like about this, I can take the low level stuff and just boost it up and make it a bit more even. And I can take the high level stuff too hard. And then maybe just a little bit more brightness on it. Here's the overall. There it is. And I think that would just add to the excitement. And then honestly, I don't need to hear much. About 3K, I'm gonna to go to 5K. Now, let's add in the guitars. I 
I think I can compress them a little bit harder on the console. I think that they're just a little bit dynamic. There's not really a huge problem with it. Probably a lot of people are going to reach for multiband compressors because of that, some of that low notes kind of getting a little bit too much. I'm going to resist that at the moment. I'm going to hit the console harder. Crunch is getting louder. It reminds me of when I was working with Sadi, that kind of like rawness. And I think that's the kind of music I like. For this kind of rock, I don't want to process it too much. Now, we did quite a bit on those room mics. But there's a lot of mics here that have got almost nothing done to them. We got that gate going on the snare that we did. But yeah, it's not a huge amount of work. Now, obviously, I've got the benefit of an SSL console. If you're going to do this without a console that has compression EQ on it, not that, not that many of the channels have any compression going. At the moment, we have no compression going on the vocals. But you could, you could build your own kind of console emulation if that's what you want to do. I have brought you to your knees. Stop your crying. There's no effect on me. Dead is what you will become. Now die. To be left apart. I have brought you to your knees. Stop your crying. There's no effect on me. Dead is what you will become. Now die. To be left apart. I have brought you to your knees. Stop your crying. There's no now the compression I brought in, I could probably bring it up a little bit become. more going in. Now die. You've got that cut, cut, cut thing that the, the SSL dumb does, which is fantastic. This. Stop your crying. There's no effect on me. Dead is what you will become. Bring it up just a little bit more. Hitting the console is a bit harder. You hear that? It's great. I have brought you to your knees. Stop your crying. There's no effect on me. Dead is what you will become. Now die. To be left apart. Now let's go to the other channel here. Now, I've got about three to one, so I'm going to mirror it on the other side as well. Release is set to fast. Let's hit the console a little bit harder so that compression comes on and so the vocal's louder. Both together. the game makeup down to zero I'm getting about two to three dB worth of game reduction on the master bus here ratio is four to one usually I go auto And definitely on auto, um, the release is, is definitely controlling the overall dynamics. But I like, I like how if I go to the fastest release time, it's just allowing things to feel a little bit more natural. It's 
letting a little bit more attack get through. It's pretty, pretty tasty. It's really good. Like some of those 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 low notes get a little bit out of control. I like it. It just makes it sound, it's death metal. It makes it sound more death metal, more exciting. So let's go, let's put some reverb on the vocals. So maybe we might do something like, how about like a delay? Let's use the H delay. We don't have a tempo on this. I have brought you to your knees. Stop your crying. There's no effect of me. Dead is what you will become. Now die to be left apart. So I'm going to low pass it, meaning I'm going to cut off some of the highs. I have brought you to your knees. Stop your crying. There's no effect of me. Dead and there's some high pass, so there's no doubling up of low end. Now die to be left apart. Now, just for schnitz and schniggles, I'm gonna put a reverb over the whole thing. I have brought you to your knees. Stop your crying. There's no effect on me. Dead is what you will become. It's great. I so I'm gonna put that in prefade so I can mute it and just hear the effects. I'm going to get some more level out of it, so I'm actually going to put a little bit of a compressor on before. But you will become, now die, to be of the bar. Pretty evil. See how it sounds in the track. Now, I'm no death metal mixer. This is not my genre at all, but that to me. Doesn't that sound like death metal to you, Eric? Doesn't that sound foreboding and scary and... Yeah, I don't know. Let's put a little bit of that effect on the other singer as well. There you go. There is Warren Hewitt's classic rock version of what a death metal mix sounds like. Probably there's some finessing stuff that I could do, but you know, we're relying on the sound of a great console. We're relying, most importantly, on the sound of a great recording. This is the kind of way I mix would record a mix a genre like this. It's not super modern, it's not clicky, it's not, like I said, not dynamic EQ, multiband compressed within an inch of its life. It's just how I like to hear music. So don't forget, you can enter the mixing competition down below. There is a link down below to download the multi-tracks. Go to ratemymix.com, sign up. There's a whole bunch of amazing, amazing prizes. It's one of our biggest ones. Actually, I think it is our biggest prize giveaway ever for a mixing competition. Of course, you've got me, you've got Christian, and you've got James Murphy, who is judging this, which is pretty insane. Those two guys alone are worth their salt. And I've done a mixing competition with Christian before, and he knows what he's doing. In this genre, he kills it. He really is 
one of the kings of this genre. So highly trust him. And yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So please don't forget to enter the mixing competition down below. Download the multi-tracks. Go to Rate My Mix. I'm very excited. This is really was a lot of fun. Completely out of, out of my genre, but who the heck cares? I had fun doing it. Thanks, everyone. So long. Farewell. Avi de Zayn. Au revoir. Adios. Enter the mixing competition to win tons of prizes. Thank you. So long. Farewell. Avi de Zayn. Au revoir. Adios. Goodbye.